Now let's build a small drum kit. Now in keeping with our ethos of an original sound palette for this, I've gone down to an underpass just by the seafront in Brighton with an old 80s CD stereo uh, boombox, a CD full of drum sounds and a zoom location recorder. And uh, by capturing this amazing natural reverb of this underpass and passing all of these drum sounds through it, you're able to create a completely unique set of drums. <laughs> Let me play you some of the bits. This is the kick. Now it's probably not going to work completely by itself. We're going to have to add some modern punch to that as well. Um, but let's go through some of the others. You can even hear a motorcycle disappearing off into the background there. And someone actually was digging across the road. So there's a tiny pneumatic drill at the end of that clap sample. Now you'll see I've got really serious fades, but I'm also using this incredibly heavy handed compressor by Eventide. Now this is a copy of an old hardware unit and it was renowned for really bringing incredible uh, sustain portions and it's perfect for uh, drum over processing. I'm also firing it through the new Lurson mastering console by OK Multimedia. Now I'm not sure about one-stop mastering solutions because I think it's too easy to get things wrong but for sound design this thing is absolutely brilliant because you just drive into it you've got some basic EQ controls it fattens it up nicely make sure you don't actually sausage all of your audio uh, but it's great as I say for just building kits. So I'm going to bounce these down now into individual files and set them up in a drum kit so we can start building a rhythm track. So here's our framework rhythm track. All I've got at the moment are some 909 hats, a kind of throbbing bass, just playing one note, and that's taken from one of the Profit 6 samples that we took earlier. Uh, I got quite a fairly standard house kick, but to add some kind of natural and organic ambience to that, I've got our location recorded tunnel kick. So let me just play you this as it stands. Now this is our uh, kick that's been recorded underneath the underpass. I've had to take out quite a big honk here. It's always natural that you're going to get some resonances when you're doing that kind of recording, but let me show you what it sounds like when I add it to this basic rhythm track. So let's take it out now. And back in. Now we're gonna to have to watch the frequency balance just to make sure it doesn't get in the way of the kick, but it's adding this real uh, perfect natural ambience to everything. So here on track 11 is our underpass drum rack. Not many sounds in there, but as you can hear, that urban ambience is starting to decay away when you actually fire the sounds out. Uh, so let's just find a clap for this. I've got this clap set up. And it's a bit bright at the top, so we're going to use the new filters inside Live 9.5. Uh, I'm going to use the MS2, which is the MS20 type. With a bit of drive. Trouble is with that drive, I think it's bringing up some of the ambience a bit too much. So let's tailor this envelope here. Just so we get a bit of it, but it's not obtrusive. Okay, let's put a clap part in. Quickly quantize that. I may turn on auto quantize in a minute whilst we're actually putting this together. And uh, let's have a listen. Maybe we don't need that skip clap there. Uh, now I've got some other copies of it, so I'm just going to kind of fire in some of the toms here. And for me, starting to build these kind of 
much more electronic groups. It's all about playing on the offbeat. So um, techno traditionally isn't as swung as house music. So I'm going to use about a 53% uh, percent MPC, MPC swing on this. And I'm just going to tune some of these toms up because they're sounding like they could just do with a bit of work. Now for me, one of the powers of techno is that you can have something, a groove going completely hypnotically, and then just one sound may come in uh, after 32, 64 bars, 16, eight bars, but suddenly it makes all the difference to have this one sound uh, kind of calling out. And I'm gonna use this quite sharp clave sample. And just play a kind of 16th pattern. Let's just contour that slightly. Uh, you'll see I've just played slightly different velocity, so it's almost rising up on each part there. So let's do a tiny bit of editing of that and then swing it and see what we got. A little bit of EQ on these toms just to bring some of the lower mids out and probably control the sub. I'm actually going to side chain this tom channel just so it's getting right out of the way of the kick each time. When we solo those drum kits, the uh, atmosphere that we're creating with those natural ambience really, really jumps out. And as you can see, we're hardly using any processing, just a touch of EQ on these drum sounds, and already they sound bedded in. Now, before we start to add some of the musical elements that we recorded before, I just want to put something on the offbeat, the place that would normally be uh, held by an open hi-hat. And I'm going to use some white noise to do this. Now, in these days of complex plugins, and everyone's got a busy plugin folder, I'm sure, it's often easy to forget just how powerful um, the actual inbuilt tools and particularly uh, in Ableton now with these uh, the, the new kind of pumped up version of Simpler that I'm using here. So I'm going to use a high pass filtered version and we'll put a bit of drive into the, into the filter. And just tailor the envelope a bit. Let's see what we get when we add that. And there we go, just a nice little simple pattern, quantize it up. But as you heard there, I've made most of them pretty short, but I'm gonna extend that one at the end of the second bar right out just to give it some interest. And let's copy that across. We can even tune the hi-hat by taking the noise sample and actually tuning it down. If you think of a standard white noise source, you don't always get the option to do that. Perfect. Now, so before we even begin on the music, we've already got a rhythm track that is fairly original because we've actually created all of the sounds ourselves. Just going to add one almost little fill using the 808 snare sample from that underground. And let's tune this down actually. Let's find the part in the drum rack. And where are we? We need to go to pitch and then we'll just use the spread just to make it a bit more stereo and transpose it down. going 
quantize that again, but I'm actually going to use a slightly bigger swing, even though we want all the hi-hats kind of uh, tighter than we normally would in, say, a house record. For this part, I'm going to use quite a heavy swing. Learning to use different swing values for different elements of your rhythm track really can be a secret weapon for building the best beats. So I'm just going to uh, now grab some more sounds using the Studio's Prophet 6. And here I've taken a fairly basic analog patch and placed it in unison mode, but it's actually playing back a chord instead of uh, all of the voices piled on one note. It's a minor chord. And we're going to add a touch of distortion, a bit of analog drift and some pan spread. And we get this sound. And we'll sample that up and put that into a small patch. But there is a very good reason why I just quickly wanted to show you this sound. Kevin Saunderson, one of the techno pioneers, went on to produce this track. And you still hear these kind of sounds cropping up left, right and centre. So it shows you just how important the early work was that, that was done by the originators. Now, I just can't resist using this minor stab we took from the P6. And I've done some additional processing here, nice bit of reverb, EQ and compression, and I'm going to fire it in on the downbeats of every bar. And that's it, we're only going to need it once every four bars or so, so I'm just going to copy that across. Okay, so now I've added our chopped up chord samples. And I've got them firing off in a rack here because we can always then switch to session view and actually process individual sounds. Um, I've got a grain delay doing a bit of kind of stereo smearing and some parallel reverb. So how I've set this up here is that I've got a very short reverb, just adding some nice ambience if I solo it. Even saturated that reverb as well and then added it to the dry signal because this uh, coming out of the little Korg monotron delay was actually totally mono. Now that's just widened things up. Now I've already come up with a little riff using these chords that seems to work perfectly there, so I'm just going to play it in. Now that's working nicely, I'm just going to quantize that and get a little bit of swing onto it using the lower swing value at the moment. Uh, copy that across there. Now I'm just going to duplicate that actual entire track. So it's just one more part I want to use and I've got one of the chords here chopped up with a bit of distortion on it. Um, now if I end up in the session view here, you can see that on that particular sound I've got a much shorter envelope than normal and a bit of a saturator and a tiny bit of EQ bringing some of the bite out. And this I'm just going to use to accentuate. And once again we'll quickly quantize that and I may just throw a little bit of more ambience onto this one. Let's close a few things up here so I can see a rack. It's very easy to get busy racks building up in Ableton but always worth the effort. Uh, drop that on here. Now, remember all that talk of craft work in the early electronic pioneers? Well, they had to create all of their drum sounds using white noise sources. And here, one of the sounds from the JP08 sounds wonderful. So I'm just going to use that as a little snare part here. Now this entire drum rack is full of more noise-based stuff that we got out of the JP08. So let me just find a bonkers one. And we'll use that just to add some real spice and punctuation.
Love that one, that's going to be perfect going in for a breakdown. Uh, I've got some deeper, darker ones here somewhere. <laughs> Perfect. Now already I'm starting to get into arrangement mode, so I'm just going to stop the screen capture for a little minute, uh, do a little bit of work on this and pull this together as the beginnings of a track. So here's the arrangement I've come up with and we've added a couple more sounds. Um, I've got some bits here that we got out of the P6. great kind of growling bass and this noise bass just here which is a kind of really basic but still powerful when used in context so let me just play you through this kind of breakdown section and back into it Now, great, it's all starting to come together and it's been great fun to do this because uh, I often find that restricting yourself to a couple of sound sources can be the mother of invention. It really pushes your brain to dig right in. Instead of going through your plug-in list and expecting inspiration from presets, um, it'll push you to use all the skills that you've built up so far. So that's it, and I hope you've really enjoyed this video and it's given you some kind of inspiration into how you can create some unique sound design and bring that into your own production using the internal tools within something like Ableton Live. And for me, this mixture between the actual physical world and the digital computer world is exactly what modern techno is all about. Now we are gonna make all of the content and all of the sounds that you've heard here available as a free download. So do check the links underneath this video.